Hey all, I'm Dan Hamilton, Marine Corps veteran and host of the Next Gen Warrior Show. As always, the Next Gen Warrior Show is brought to you by Chairman George P. Bush and our dedicated staff here at the Texas Veterans Land Board. Here in the Next Gen Warrior Show, we are proud to promote the success stories and the achievements of veterans. And we hope stories like Brian joining me today will help encourage veterans who may be struggling, looking for solutions, or really looking for an example of how to transition out of the military. As I said, joining me today is Brian Arrington. He spent 20 years, one month, and 12 days in the United States Air Force. He is currently a business initiative consultant at Wells Fargo and the founder of Vets to Industry. Brian, it's great to have you on the program today. How are you? Uh, doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to, to talk about your, your military experience your transition out of the service, and then your founding of, of V2I. But let's talk first, uh, before we get into V2I and before we get into the transition, tell us a little bit about your, your MOS and what you did in the service. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I came in in 1999 as a security forces uh, with uh, the, obviously the Air Force. Uh, and it was uh, uh, an interesting ride to, uh, to start my uh, career. Uh, but I uh, ended up staying in that same career field for the entire 20 years. I uh, did a little special uh, unit action with um, the secure, Security Forces Raven, mm. uh, which took me to 90 countries, five of the continents, five of the seven continents, and uh, it allowed me to really uh, grab a lot of culture around the world, which I'm very thankful for, thankful to the Air Force for. Um, was on uh, three humanitarian missions uh, to uh, Haiti for the uh, um, uh, humanitarian relief operations, uh, Israel Lebanese Middle East crisis, uh, and uh, uh, Udapau, Thailand when the uh, hurricane hit. Hmm. So I uh, got to explore a lot and had a great time in my career. When, when you joined the Air Force, did you have any other experience outside of the country or traveling? Or once you joined, was it like, you know, the door opened to the entire world almost? Yeah, I had been to four countries uh, when I was 10. Okay. My parents took me around uh, a little bit of the globe, mainly uh, Europe. Uh, so I got to experience that when I was younger. Um, but nothing like uh, I would be doing when, uh, when I got older, you know, nine years later. 10 years no, later. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, it's a really tremendous career and I appreciate your, your dedication and service to the Air Force and to the nation. And one thing that we talked about on the call earlier was after you spend 20 years in security forces, you are, I think what you described as a subject matter expert. And on the other side of that, when you did have to hang up your uniform, you talked about becoming then an individual contributor and how difficult that was for you. So I wanna ask if you can talk to us a little bit about what the transition was like for you and how you uh, were able to fit in or felt frustrated with the transition process. Yeah, so that's a uh, uh, long story, which is good. So I uh, obviously retired 20 years, uh, one July, 2019. Uh, but my transition journey really started a year prior, and it was um, March of 2018 when I found LinkedIn by accident. And after finding LinkedIn by accident, by going home, turning on the news, and this commercial came on, joined 550 million of us. I'm like, what's this? Uh, is this like a job board? And so I downloaded the app, but, you know, me still being security forces, all worried about, you know, anti-terrorism the threats, uh, the first thing that LinkedIn has you do is create your profile. I'm like, why do I have to create a profile for a uh, job board? Like, I don't, why? And so I didn't put a picture on there, didn't put a headline, put minimum stuff. And of course, at the time, nobody tells you when you're a year out what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's, um, uh, until you go to tap, which, um, provides a little bit of foundation, but ultimately it's really a lot of the people that are outside that really give you the support you need to transition successfully. 
I found that out over the span of the year that I was transitioning. And when I uh, finally got on LinkedIn, um, I learned that there was 40,000 veteran service organizations nationwide that provided free resources and support to us and our families. And it completely shocked me and made me significantly upset. Because mm. um, all I could think about was 2002, when I put on E5, which is the first supervisory rank in the, in the military, and all of the airmen that I had let get out the military since then, uh, in those 17 years at that point in time, uh, without setting them up for success on the outside due to my own ignorance on all the free resources that were out there. And then it hit me in the gut. Uh, and I actually started tearing up in this class that we're in uh, called Centurion Military Alliance, put on by Shante Hall. And what I came to realize is how many of those airmen are now part of the 22 who've killed themselves a day or are unemployed or underemployed or on substance abuse or divorced or homeless or incarcerated, all because Brian Arrington, Sergeant Arrington, didn't know about the free resources that could have helped them, given them uh, opportunities and most importantly, build hope for each one of them. Um, and to, to be honest, going through in my mind, what do we do when we're in the military as NCOs and uh, senior non-commissioned officers? We send a, a soldier or airman or Marine to their transition assistance program, their TAP, and their, their version of it. And we never see them again, unless they're like your best friend or something of that nature, yeah. or they have a, uh, like they, they reach back out to you for a recommendation letter for college, you never hear from them again. Uh, and so statistically, I've let hundreds and hundreds of airmen out of the military. I mean, I had 84 troops when I was leaving the military. And how many of them are actually part of those 22 or unemployed, or underemployed, or substance abuse, or divorced, or homeless, or incarcerated, or any combination thereof? And there's no way of me knowing. And that's heartbreaking. Can I ask you how you were able to take that frustration? And the reason I ask, right, is because I think a lot of veterans or those in the military who experience uh, either the trauma of a friend uh, taking their life or even just see the frustration of their peers after they get out of the service and uh, just trying to struggle to, to find their footing and to get comfortable. What you know, what made you want to found something or create something as opposed to like not getting pulled down in, in the frustration and the anger that you felt? How were you able to kind of like keep your head above water and, and keep your mind focused on a goal that would really help other people? It was because of the feeling that I got and it was anger. Mm. It was just significant anger. Uh, I, was, I had so much anger for the Department of Defense that they had never told me about all these free resources. Uh, Cause I didn't understand at the time that's the department of labor that teaches us how to transition. Uh, I, I was upset at all the veteran service organizations that were out there that didn't come on base to tell us about them. But I later found out that they're not allowed on by the department of defense because the department of defense can't vet them. Uh, you have a few bases here and there that kind of go rogue uh, some rogue tap coordinators and counselors who, who let some of the nonprofits uh, come on base, but um, you're talking worldwide, it, it doesn't happen. The knowledge is out there. And I was really upset, and uh, I'm probably going to get hate mail for this, but at every senior NCO who's ever gotten out of the military, uh, who has a retired ID, who didn't come back on base, and shout from the rooftops about all these veteran service organizations so that the younger troops can continually teach uh, all of these resources. And I wanted to not be that senior NCO getting out, not providing that information because I had wasted 17 years and I wasn't gonna waste any more time. So that's why I created Vets to Industry. So if I can stop you right there. So, so tell me, there's like, there's two thoughts processes going on here. And I kind of want to, I want to distill them because 
one of your thought processes, I'm going to, I'm going to create vets to industry and I'm going to provide services for other people because I wish I would have had it. I wish I would have had the knowledge. I wish I had the, the resources, right. the logistics and the infrastructure. But the other part is you got to provide for Brian and mm-hmm. you got to take care of yourself. So right. let's go to that real quick. Tell me, tell me it, while you're trying to like fix this problem that you see and, and you don't want to perpetuate the difficulties, tell me how the job search was for you. What were you looking, what were you looking towards, what you're looking to do and uh, where did you find yourself? Yeah, great question. So um, it was a dual opera, dual opera. Um, So what I basically did was um, when I started my search, I wanted to be a marketing manager mm. uh, because I had a master's degree in management and I took one class in marketing when I was in my master's and I was like, oh, I love marketing. So I could be a marketing manager, um, not thinking about all the requirements that goes into actually being <laughs> a marketing manager, right? And of course, I'm a military cop. So right. um, fast forward a little bit, uh, we go into December and I've been December 2018, and I've been learning for the whole since March all of the different resources that I could possibly learn about transitioning, mm. and you know how to brand myself and and what kind of a authentic message to send out about who I am and what I'm looking for, and then I started this program called Four Block. Mm-hmm. and Hire Heroes, uh, Hiring Our Heroes Corporate Fellowship Program. And those two together is what really uh, stepped my uh, knowledge up and my desire to change careers. Uh, and it's a good thing. Four I was going to say, it was a good thing, right? That you, that you, yeah. that you, used, you used those, those resources, but you found out maybe that you, you wanted to do something different. Yeah. So when I, when I, I came into four block just saying, I'm going to be a marketing manager. Nobody's going to stop me from doing that. Our first session was with Jay Walter Thompson, um, you know, which is the longest running advertising company in the world. I said, this is a sign. I'm supposed to land at this company. This is our first night there. And I started getting feedback from the instructors saying, Brian, you can't be a marketing manager. Mm. It's like, Yes, I can. Why can't I? You say, because you don't have any experience. Mm. Like, sure I do. I was on the top three council. I was, I was pushing out flyers to people. I was, you know, running some kind of events here and there. And, um, you know, I could get people interested in things like, hey, I know marketing, right? <laughs> right? And they're like, no, Brian, you don't know anything about the t- tools and the analytics that go into marketing. You don't, you don't understand the language. Mm. You don't understand 90% of what a marketing manager has to do. You would come in as a marketing analyst. I was like, well, what's that pay? And they said $40,000 a year. I was like, I can't make that. I have a family. I got six kids. I was like, I can't, I can't make it on 40000 They said, well, then find something else. I was mm. like, ugh. So I did the, the, when we had the class, the job market analysis class in four block, um, I volunteered to actually uh, present. And I presented the difference between becoming a marketing analyst, Mm -hmm. uh, consultant, which I just learned what a consultant was a few weeks prior, had no idea what a consultant was, and a nonprofit owner, because I had just started Vets to Industry uh, and it was a, an LLC because I didn't know how to build a nonprofit. So I used Swift Filings, uh, our last $2,000 before we uh, um, transitioned out of the military. My wife thought I was crazy because I was using all, all of our savings uh, for this nonprofit. Put it all on V2I. Yeah, put it all on V2I for you know, something that I wasn't going to get paid for. Mm. Like um, I, didn't, I didn't put a bank account with the best industry and I wanted to make it a nonprofit, but I didn't know how. Mm. So um, uh, with all this, I I did this job market analysis. I realized that consulting was what I wanted to do. So I had met an individual named Justin Pearson uh, through my Centurion Military Alliance class back in March. Uh, Shante Hall actually introduced me to him. And he had been my mentor for 
that year. And he reached out to me in February and said, hey, um, are you still interested in being a consultant? I was like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, and at the time, he just became a military uh, sourcing recruiter at Wells Fargo. And he said, well, why don't you come over to Wells Fargo? I said, I don't want to be a teller. <laughs> and he started cracking yeah, that's the only thing you could think of is a, a teller. Like I was thinking in the 1800s tombstone movie, a teller's getting robbed and, and stuck stuff up. Like yeah. yeah. I don't want to do that. Every TV show I've ever seen, you know, tell, <laughs> tellers get robbed. Like, no, man, I, I left that's not what I envisioned security forces. after the military. Yeah, I left security forces. I'm not going into something where I'm now the hostage. Like, no, not going to happen. And he's like, no, man, we, we have consultants. It's like you do he's like yeah he said bro i don't know anything about finance <laughs> i have no i can't balance a checkbook like i can't work for a bank and he says you don't need to know anything about finance i was like what <laughs> you're real confused at this point absolutely so i was like i can i can be a, a financial consultant but non-financial consultant right. like what what, what am I, what do I do with my hands? Like, uh, so um, he introduced me to uh, Lynette Hokey, uh, who was another military sourcer. And they basically sent me two job um, uh, recommend or requisitions and uh, told me to apply for both. They said, my resume was great. It'll, it'll fit both. And uh, one was for a protocol officer down in Florida uh, for the lead regional bank president. And the second one was for the, the the job that I actually got. And I was also interviewing for Accenture at the same time. And I actually received um, job offers for both the Accenture uh, career and the Wells Fargo one on the same day. Wow. And that was a Friday, uh, three weeks before I got out the military. And one thing that really happened, which scared me, by the way, because I was doing everything right, but I didn't even get a job offer till three weeks before, but I was helping other people land careers while I was still in the, the military. Can I, can, I, can I just pause you real quick and yeah. ask you about the interview process and, and how many interviews you went to, whether it was for Wells Fargo or for Accenture and what that experience was like for you? Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you about the Accenture one first because that was interesting. So I went into the interviews, I got to uh, round two of the interview with a recruiter and she didn't pass me through. Um, and this then- Face-to-face -face interview? No, this was uh, over the phone, uh, but she didn't pass me through. And my best friend from when we were nine years old works at Accenture. She was a managing, uh, she was a, a manager and she said, wait a minute, you are, you are perfectly suited for, for this role. And the hiring manager that I'd be working for wanted me too. Mm. So, but the recruiter wouldn't pass me to the next level. There's four interviews for Accenture. Uh, and this was not through a veteran process at all. Okay. Because uh, Accenture does have a veteran pipeline as well. And I told Nancy, why don't I just go through the veteran uh, pipeline? And Nancy be my friend. She's like, no, no, no. We're going to get you in for the front, front door. Yeah. Like, all right. Um, so they created a business case for me and sent it all the way up their chain of command. And three weeks after getting the denial letter, I get an email saying, congratulations, I'm moving forward to the third round. So I, I probably still have it. I had the denial letter from Accenture yeah. and then I had the accept the, uh, the congratulations letter three weeks later. I got this and I was so confused. So I, I, message nancy like what what the heck what is this She's like, oh, congratulations. This? yeah congratulations you're gonna have a uh, telephone uh, call and the, the funny thing is my third uh, call could it was supposed to be with the hiring manager mm -hmm. but because she had uh put it in for the business case she couldn't do it because you know conflict of interest so they sent my interview up to somebody in new york who happened to be a uh, transition tack p from the wow. Air Force. And so we, we spent a good 20 minutes talking about um, the, the Air Force before we even started with my interview. 
<laughs> and made that round, made it to the fourth round, which was the managing director, and and he loved me. And you know that next week, uh, or actually that the next day, I got the job offer from Accenture. Does how much? You know, how much of this plays into what you do at Vets to Industry? And can you explain to us? one, the service that you're trying to provide, and two, maybe maybe you have already described this, but some of the, uh, maybe the bridges that were lacking between you kind of your experience in the military and then getting the, getting the interviews and getting the jobs and getting the network. So I haven't told anyone this on any of the podcasts yet, but the this is a real- good scoop, I like this. Yeah. We always so, bring the best. So the real reason why I started Vets to Industry was because I had, for the whole year, had um, started getting as many resources collected as possible, right? And I saw that there were so many man hours that, that it took to find these resources because it wasn't all in one spot that I said, I want to stop people from having to spend so much wasted time just looking for the resources. I wanted to give it to them so they could just start working um, on whatever their their career goals or their life needs were. So that was the reason why I started Vesta Industry. And then the other part was how upset I was that I wasn't told about yeah. all these resources. So I knew that I wanted to build the Library of Atlantis for veterans, military spouses, and dependent children. And I was going to do that. Um, and Bobby Young uh, with Inspired Growth Portal, who's the company that uh, runs our website, um, she got on a 20-minute call with me after I did a cold emails to about seven people that had uh, that were veterans and had website design backgrounds. And she said, not only will I build this website for you, but I'll do it pro bono. Um, and she's been amazing um, just the entire time. Uh, and then we, uh, um, you know, I started with 72 resources that I gave her and we are now at just under 1000 resources with 4000 resources in our queue that are getting updated and, and uh, vetted uh, and put on the website. That is, that's really incredible. And, and I appreciate you doing that. I think it's, I think it's so great because, you know, the vets like yourself that we have on the show, I, I always admire them because of their ability to identify a problem and then create the solution. And one thing that I heard when I was getting out, I got out and first time I got out was in 2009. And then the second time was here in Austin and uh, at the tail end of 2011. And the one thing that I think the best piece of advice I, I got was that the best person to help you transition is another veteran. And you are that guy, you know, you are that guy that is, that is building the networks and is building really the digital infrastructure to catch veterans and make sure that they're plugged in with, with people who have similar, similar circumstances and similar background. But I wanted to ask you is, in, is there anything about you know, the transition out of the military from the vets to industry perspective that maybe you didn't experience yourself or things that you see people, people struggling with that uh, maybe it's from the hiring side, you know, maybe it's from the company side about are you working with them to try to try to understand or demystify military service? Or is there something about the military transition that you that you think back maybe a couple years ago and I didn't, I, you know, that I didn't know was happening to veterans? Yeah, I, th I think it's more of the fact that what we provide is that um, is opportunities, connections, success, and hope. And mm -hmm. most important thing is hope because people don't commit suicide because of finances or because their girlfriend left or, or any of those. They do harm to themselves where they fall down a, a tumbling. Um, yeah, a repeated hole. fall over and over again. Like yeah. Can't get up. Um, because of hope, of, of lost hope. So if you can put a resource or something in front of them saying, you know, yes, your lights went off but here's a resource that, and they can help you, um, you know, put, turn your lights back on. 
oh, okay. So then they have hope. Then they're not thinking about, you know, the negatives. Yeah. They're thinking about a positive. And then, I, okay, so you, you also need a place to stay. Okay, well, here's all the places in, in your area and all the community uh, outreach, veteran outreach that might be able to assist you. Uh, and they're like, oh, okay. And they can call all those. Like, oh, now you need employment. Okay, let's come to one of our best industry virtual networking circuit events where we bring uh, Fortune 500 companies and staffing firms and uh, mid sized and small sized businesses with transitioning service members, current service members, so they can learn about these companies way ahead of their transition date. Veterans, military spouses, caregivers, dependent children, work age children. Uh, along with you know blue star family members so and gold star family members so we bring them all together along with veteran service organizations and universities and colleges and we create a uh, environment where it's intimate and people can exchange information they get to talk to each other um, get to see different roles talk to recruiters um, and it's just amazing. They usually have calls throughout the week just based on the interactions. So one thing, too, that, that I want to highlight here for our audience is how much it's grown. And, and you may have yeah, I've touched on that, but you started out with, I think you said, 74 resources and X 72. amount of followers. Yeah. And how much has that grown? Yeah. So I said, you know, we went from 72 to just under 1000 now and we have. Uh, we have about another 150 scholarships to put up on the website and we have about 126 right now. So those are coming, but we have 36,600 and some change followers on our LinkedIn company page alone. And that's been accrued in less than two years of, of us being um, a, a, an entity. Um, so that's including the, the LLC being birthed, and then a year from that LLC being birthed, we were able to get the nonprofit started. So that really started in that, that year time frame. So do you credit that growth with any of the marketing classes that uh, you took when you were in the Air Force? <laughs> or was um, this just um, uh, more so a good idea that, that, that needed to be there for veterans? You know, it's, it's grown exponentially. Um, because of word of mouth, grassroots, um, you know, a lot of people volunteer. Um, we have 80, uh, about 80 volunteers now, best industry. Um, and that fluctuates because as people come in, there are some, a lot of times they're transitioning service members who are, who are just like me. They just found out about all these resources and they're like, no, this has to get out to everyone. It's like, yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the team. Help us. Yeah. And they're like, absolutely. And they do everything they can. And then they transition uh, and then, you know, they start their work and then they try to provide some, some help, but you know, real work, real life, you know, takes, takes place too. Um, so that cycle continues, but we are, um, you know, our website, we have over uh, 170,000 uh, visits site uh, page views on our website uh, and it's been, it's been incredible um, just having have so many people come. Yeah, if, if I can have you maybe give advice to, to an individual veteran, I think one of the most difficult things for veterans to overcome or maybe it's, it's what they need to develop is talking about themselves, an the elevator pitch. This was something that uh, I've, I've really had to learn how to work on because I didn't you don't practice that in the military, right? You don't go up to Sergeant Major and yeah. give him your elevator pitch about where you're from, what your MOS is, and what you've done in the military. That's nope. not how it works. But for a young veteran who's leaving, you know, the Air Force or the Marine Corps after four, eight years, and they get on your platform, what would you tell them about either how to present themselves or how to sell themselves to, to the business community and the hiring community? Yeah. We actually help them with it. So when they come uh, to Vets Industry and if people want to get uh, advice and support, all they have to do is email operations at vets2industry.com. That's vets, the number two, industry.com. 
and we'll connect you with a mentor from Best Stew Industry, and they will help you with um, you know some resume support, resources, elevator pitch, interview, uh, coaching, uh, resources, and what we do is we basically tell them, all right, you're going to have to present yourself in, in best as you can, like a first date, right, um, with what you did and what the results were and what you can do for that company. Because they want to know what, what you offer, what right. you bring. And you have to do it quickly. But you have to, and you don't want to add military jargon to it. They're not going to understand any of that stuff. Um, so what we do is we also give them an opportunity to practice it. At our best industry networking events, everyone is required, everyone, including the recruiters. Uh, I make every single person uh, give their elevator sp speech uh, 30 seconds in each breakout room that they go to. So uh, they, they get to try it out, but they can be different people in each, each room. So they can try out it different ways. Um, they can be Spider-Man in one room, Batman in another, and Powerpuff Girls in the other. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. But so can they you, get to play. Yeah, and I, I appreciate you saying that because I think the elevator pitch and the, be, the ability to be able to connect with somebody on a person-to-person -person basis outside of the military is something that takes time. And, and to be able to have the resources to speak into a veteran, to tell them how to go about that is certainly a way to, to – uh, hone in on, on really what that needs to be. And if a veteran is to, is to get on the website and they're, and they're signed up and they want to get plugged in to the networking seminars, what can they expect during that day? Or what are, what are you guys providing? Yeah. So it starts off with uh, me introducing Vets to Industry, what it is, uh, the resource library and the networking events. Uh, we actually have an events page now that just launched uh, this month. Uh, which is on the website, that's the industry that you cook events. Uh, the other thing is um, during the day, we have, after my speech, we have the keynote speaker for that event uh, on a, a given topic, um, either about leadership or about mental health or about transitioning uh, support or, or some kind of specific transitioning engagement uh, or need. Then it goes right into our um, breakout session. We change the model up. So instead of having all the recruiters talk, um, we have the sponsors talk, and then we go right to a breakout room. And the breakout rooms are awesome. It's 25 minutes, like speed dating, but it's speed networking. And you usually have groups of eight to 10 in there. And when you're in there, everybody, when you start, you're gonna have a best industry facilitator, or somebody that's been to a lot of events before who will run the room. And what they're gonna do is have everybody do their 30 second elevator pitch. And when they do the elevator pitch, uh, that takes about four minutes. Um, and then after that elevator pitch is done, then we can start talking about, you know, uh, who, what kind of things that recruiters are looking for or what kind of hurdles that they're going through, individuals are going through. Um, specifically, the transition service members can talk about their woes and things that they're, you know, they're needing support on and everyone can kind of cash in. The yeah. veteran service organizations can chime in on, on help and share their resources in, in the room. Uh, so it's a really big learning experience, even for the recruiters. Everyone, every time they come, they learn more and more. Uh, about different resources and support uh, at the end. And then we just do circuits. So then they go to an intermission where I bring some kind of resource up to talk to the whole 500 person audience. We usually have 500 people as our max, but we have about at times 100 people on the wait list. We sell out really quickly. And by sell, I mean, it's free tickets, um, but um, you know, that you they get- register. Taken. Yeah, you got to register for the events, uh, you know, before before the time's up on the on the day of the event. And uh, once you do, um, you're guaranteed to get in. Uh, but if you're on the wait list, uh, that means you waited too long. Uh, we can still try to get you in, but you don't want to be on the wait list. No, it's it's really incredible what you're doing, and I appreciate you creating that that community. 
can I ask you why LinkedIn? And if you can talk about maybe your arc from where you first started your LinkedIn page and you'll be like, I don't know if I want to put all this, you know, personal identified material out there for people. And now you're kind of a LinkedIn pro. And can you talk about that arc a little bit? Yeah. So I have been on Facebook for a while, for, you know, many years. And when I found LinkedIn and I gained so much knowledge from it, like it was, I, I learned from the greats, Daniel Savage, Corey Boatwright, Herb Thompson, uh, Shantae Hall, um, just you know, Michael Quinn, uh, the greats on it. And then once I did that, I realized the community on LinkedIn is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, and the veteran community is, is vast, but they're not all together. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to bring them all together. And I've been able to do that with the best industry community. Uh, I, I have some really highly talented and amazing professionals that are my volunteers and are my leadership positions who have their networks uh, that now align with other people's networks that wouldn't have been together had it had this V2I not been formed. Um, let me ask you this, if I can take it back to, to your personal or your, your, uh, circumstances, you mentioned that, that you got to the, to the part where you were, uh, on the fourth round of Accenture, but you actually took the position at Wells Fargo, right? And what has life been for you in the workplace? And what have you learned about yourself kind of starting a career over? And I think I heard maybe in the background there, a little cat. So that was, I hear it. We, we have a fan. We, we get some dogs, but I think this is the first time we've had a, a feline appearance on the show. So tell him yeah, or her that we're glad she, to have him. She's loud. So I'm <laughs> no, trying she's hard to talk <laughs> over her. Um, she's, she's really excited about the conversation. So it's good to have some yeah, fans, you know? Absolutely. So, <laughs> uh, What's the cat's name? Uh, Alec. Alec. Okay. Yeah she's, yeah. she's getting after it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, I just lost the question. Yeah, no worries. No worries. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I was, yeah, I, I was interested to know how your personal experience has been. Cause, cause you kind of oh. walked us through how you had gotten to the point with Accenture where you were on the first, fourth conversation with them. But, uh, from, from my understanding, you were actually working as a business initiative consultant for Wells Fargo. And I yes. was interested to know, you know, maybe what you've learned about yourself now that you are in, uh, in your career field and you have transitioned out of the military and you've been working for a little while. So um, I'm going to give you another first scoop. Um, so the biggest thing that uh, affected me coming out of the military um, was imposter syndrome. Mm. Uh, coming from a background which I hid very well, uh, my resume doesn't read anything like uh, security forces. Um, it reads like a consultant, hmm. uh, a consultant in the military. And I was actually more scared when I got two job offers and all I had to do was accept that I actually landed a consultant role. Um, now, like, oh my gosh, they're going to ask me to consult. Like, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like the dog cool. that finally catches the car. You go, I don't know what to do with it now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I, uh, you know, I, I started with with Wells, and I learned that okay, I can I can do this. But the problem was, I left the military as a subject matter expert, and I had 20 years as a military cop, and now I'm starting off, you know, with no background in this industry or anything and still a year and eight months or so into this job i still feel imposter syndrome and i equate it to this um for those service members that are listening in you you did you know 10 years or 15 years or 20 years or you know had a lot of experience in a certain area and then imagine yourself going back to being an E2 or E3 in the military and think of how long it took you to be actually a productive member 
of your unit where you could be doing something on your own without having supervision and that you actually really understood it full. Um, it takes way more than a year and a half, yeah. I'll tell you that much, because I'm not there yet. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I had 20 years of experience, life experience. Um, so don't be so hard on yourselves. And that's what I'm trying not to be either. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be a subject matter expert uh, at the year and a half mark, which is not possible. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I appreciate that that level of, of, of self-analysis and, and self-understanding. And I think it's something that's really crucial because I love, I just love the fact that you talked about going from a subject matter expert to an individual contributor. And that's a really hard thing to do. And I, I just certainly think it takes, I think if, if you're a veteran listening to this and you can replicate that kind of understanding and humility when you go into a workplace and realize that you are now an individual contributor and you're going to have to learn from the people around you who have been in the industry for five, 10 or 15 years, maybe 20 years longer than you have. It will certainly make you a better, a better team player when, when you get out of the military uh, and it'll make your transition out uh, much smoother because you'll get along better with your boss. You'll get along better with your coworkers and you'll learn a lot. And I appreciate you saying that uh, before we close it out though, Brian, is there anything else that, that you would like to add today that maybe we didn't get to hit on? Um, yeah, uh, I would ask everyone to, uh, you know, reach out to us if you have any questions or need access to resources. Uh, check out our search benefits on our website, uh, www.vets2industry.com. Uh, also, if you are suffering and need life needs or support, um, send an email to support at vets2industry.com and we'll get you lined up with uh, life support systems uh, and uh, resources around the country. We're nationwide, uh, so we'll get you help and we'll find the help closest to you. Uh, and come to our, ne our networking events. Um, you, you're gonna love it. Um, and all the other events, we're gonna start doing in-person events coming up soon uh, this spring and, and into the, the fall. and and they're on. So look for our events on our events page and, and come find us and, and enjoy our booth. Absolutely, Brian. Well, it's been great to have you on the show. I appreciate your, your lifetime of military service and the great work that you're doing at Vets to Industry. Thank, uh, thank you so much for being on the program. And I also appreciate the support of Alec the Cat in the back there. Yeah, it's great. And uh, by the way, follow us on yes. LinkedIn on Facebook, on Twitter, and we have a YouTube channel too. So you check that out, you'll see all of our events from uh, previous posted on there. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll love it. Absolutely, well, you're doing, you're doing really great work and I appreciate you not only walking us through the vets to industry and the great resources that you provide, but also humanizing it and talking about, about your, your personal journey out of the military and really, really providing solutions for veterans, for, for your brothers and sisters in arms. It's been great to have you on the show today. Likewise, thank you for having me. Absolutely. appreciate it. On behalf of Chairman George P. Bush and our dedicated staff at the Texas Veterans Land Board, this concludes our show today. We would love for you to follow us, share these success stories and the resources by typing in Voices of Veterans on your favorite podcast platform or social media page. We will see you back here next Monday. Until then, I'm Dan Hamilton. We'll see you soon. Follow us on Instagram at Voices of Vets, on Twitter at Voice of Veterans, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Voices of Veterans. To hear more, please visit voicesofveterans.org. Join us in sharing the success stories of Texas veterans. Thank you for joining us for the Next Gen Warrior Podcast.